Man be man is back. Oh, okay, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay, Oh my gosh, the man got messed up! This is a five out of freaking five. It is beat making time. Next week is E3 week, my album comes out next week. I have the leopard. This is your point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash and True in front of. <laughs> Back at it with another Pokemon Unite commentary video gameplay for you guys. And by the time you're watching this video, there's a very good chance I will be in New York City. Yeah, for GoFest. So, there you go with that. But that's not what this video is about. Instead, what this video is about is NBA Free Agency. Yeah, we're talking about NBA Free Agency. So, what's going on? Well, there's a lot going on, actually. Um... So, for starters, let's start off with the NBA draft. And even though, like, there's a bunch of guys that went, you know, up much early in the draft. Like, we're talking guys who went in the round, first round, and then, like, what, 25 guys who went in the second round. But the main story here is that Ronnie James is now a Los Angeles Laker. So, yeah, that's crazy right there. And... To make things even more crazy, and this was announced, like, I think a day before I dropped this video, ever, LeBron have agreed to a two-year, $105 million deal with the Lakers. So he's going to stay with the Lakers for another two years. And what we're going to see is a father-son duo playing for the exact same team in the NBA. I'm not sure that's ever been done before, but that is crazy. And, and here's what I would say to this. Like, some people may think, oh, it's a stretch because the, the rest is getting better, stuff like that. But his thing got to be remembered. His thing got to be remembered. Two years ago, the Los Angeles Lakers, or two seasons ago to be exact, the Los Angeles Lakers went from a team that was in the playing tournament to the NBA Western Conference Finals. So when you're in the play-in and you win a play-in game, that means you're entering the playoffs as either a 7 seed or an 8 seed. And I believe the Lakers were a 7 seed. Since they won their play in, they made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals, which is crazy. It's crazy to think about before they got swept by the Denver Nuggets, who eventually win the whole thing. But you can make an argument that if the Lakers would have won the Western Conference Finals against Denver that year, they would have been the ones to win the whole thing. Because I'll be honest, I don't remember who they played. Oh, they played the Heat. They played the Heat in the NBA Finals which was, to a degree, a crazy run in itself. But if the Lakers were to face the Heat in the finals, the Lakers would have won that title without question. And then this past season, they, they could have done it again. They could have done it again because the top teams in the rest, like the Minnesota Timberwolves, the number one seed, Oklahoma City, Thun City Thunder, the uh, Los Angeles Clippers, the Dallas Mavericks, and so on, the Lakers were able to compete with those teams. But what happened? Once they got into the first round, once they got out of the playing tournament again, they had to deal with the Denver Nuggets. And even though they won one game, but they still lost in five. Like, they cannot get over the hump that is the Denver Nuggets. So, but at the same time, if you would have said, oh, they would have played anybody else, if they would have played anybody else, whether they're the higher seed or the lower seed, you can make a strong case that the Lakers could have made it out of the rest. You really, really could, which is crazy to think about. And I'm not calling myself the biggest Lakers fan, but at the same time, I don't, I don't dislike them like I do Boston, but that's another story for another day. But even with Boston, it's like not the level of Cleveland. So, yeah, there's that. But realistically speaking, yeah, the Lakers can compete. And even though the rest have gotten better with OKC making moves, well, to a degree, the rest got better. OKC making moves. And they now looking like the front runners to come out of the rest. You uh, assuming that Anthony Davis stays healthy, and if you met LeBron is basically turning forty this year. Assuming LeBron stay healthy, you cannot count out the Lakers. So and it, so basically, I say all that to say this: if within these next two years the Lakers win an NBA championship with LeBron and Bronny James teammates, something that nobody, as far as I know, so something that nobody has ever done before. I am willing, well, there's no I am willing. You have to start 
some type of conversation regarding the GOAT. You have to. Because at that point, LeBron would get his, what is it, fifth championship at that point? And he would have won it with his son. And it's like, that's crazy. And now we have, it, it, right now, the, the, the discussion is closed. It's Jordan. It, it's straight up Jordan. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care LeBron, the lead leading scorer, or the history leading scorer. It's still Jordan. But if LeBron wins one more and he does it with his son, then the conversation has to be open. I'm still saying Jordan, but if somebody were to say LeBron at that point, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I'll be like, you know what? I can see where you're going with that. I'm going to disagree and say Jordan, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. As of right now, I, if somebody were to say LeBron, I'm losing sleep over it. <laughs> but uh, so those two things happen. So let's go on with the rest of the NBA free agency. Um, so a lot of stuff has happened. You know, um, Kyle Anderson left the Minnesota Timberwolves, and he's now with the Golden State Warriors. You know, the Celtics bringing back uh, Xavier Tillman Sr., and they, the Magic are going to keep Mo Wagner and stuff like that. And then um, the Pacers and James Reisman agreed to a deal, which is kind of interesting. But let's talk about some big-time news that happened, actually. So my Detroit Pistons, <laughs> they're bringing back to Byers Harris, a two-year, $52 million deal. So we're talking about, like, $26 million per year. And I'm like... I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, they got a bunch of young talent there, but I don't know how I feel about that. Uh -uh. Because I'll be perfectly honest. While this draft, the talent pool within this draft was not all that spectacular. So even though the Pistons got robbed of getting the number one pick for the second straight year in a freaking row, by the way, I'm not losing sleep about it. Like, it, it's st I still say there's a conspiracy. First of all, um, I'm always under the assumption that the NBA does not like the Detroit Pistons. I'm also under the assumption that sports media despise Detroit. So there's that. So for that to happen, for them to be projected to get the number one pick, only for them to drop to the number five pick two straight years in a row, I'm calling conspiracy. But this year, I'm not losing sleep about it because the draft pool in this year, or the talent pool in this year's draft was not all that. Next year, I'm hearing, is going to be a different story. So the fact that they got Tobias Harris, I'm like, that's going to mess up the piss of chances of getting a number one pick next year. So we'll see what happens, though. We will see what happens. Now, let's talk about some news. Let's, let's get on to some news. So Paul George. Paul George left the Los Angeles Clippers and is now heading to the Philadelphia 76ers. And I want, I really, really want to say that Philly is the favorites out of the East. I want to say it. I just can't say it. And you're probably wondering why you can't say that. And it's simple, really. Paul George, Gerald and B, they're both injury prone. It's that simple. They're both injury prone. So can I trust the two of them to play an entire regular season in the entire playoffs? No, because at least one of them is going to get injured, and I would not be surprised if it's both of them. So because of that, I'm looking at that squad, and I'm saying, yeah, I can't pick them as favorites to come out of the East. I would be like, it would be cool if they did, but... The way things stands right now, until they both can prove that they are no longer injury prone. Joel and B almost did it. He almost did it, but then he got injured this past season. That messed up Philly chances to come out of the East. But so at this point, until both of them can prove that they are no longer injury prone, I cannot pick Philly to come out of the East. So there you go with that. Now, let's talk about something else. And we're going to get back to the Lakers, I guess. Uh, this coming season, they have a shot of knocking off Denver. Now, you're probably wondering, assuming that they meet up in the playoffs somewhere. And you're probably wondering, why is that? Because Denver lost Pentavious Cadwell Pope, Pope rather. He's now with the Orlando Magic. He signed a three-year deal with them. And 
that Denver also lost somebody else. I think um Grant, I forgot his name. So it's like, yeah, and then they haven't really gotten anybody back of relevance. And I'm like, yeah, this ain't good, man. Like, Denver, if y'all trying to win another championship, if y'all trying to keep the Lakers off your backs, this ain't good. This is not good at all. Like, it's really, really not. So I'm looking at Denver. They still an elite team and the rest. But in terms of them winning another championship, unless they make some type of crazy move between now and the what the end of the trades until trading is over for this upcoming season, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to say, yeah, this team can still win a championship. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to say that. So that that was crazy right there. That was crazy. Like Orlando, obviously a player team. Um, they're gonna be better, obviously. Actually, you could look at them and say they might be an elite team. Not a title contender, but an elite team. They might. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see if they make any more moves. But yeah, we'll see how things go with that deal. So there you go with that. Another big thing that happened. The Golden State Warriors <laughs> had got... Basically, they, they let Clay go. They basically did a sign and trade deal where they sent Clay Thompson to the Dallas Mavericks, which is some people are looking at that and saying that that's crazy. And my thing is, Clay obviously going to be the shooting. I'm not shooting guard. I'm small forward here because uh, Kyrie is the shooting guard and Luka is the point guard, which makes sense. That fits for all three of those guys. But. Clay is not the same player that he used to be, especially defensively. Like Clay can still shoot. Like you still you have to respect you have to respect Clay for his shooting ability. But he's not the defender that he used to be. But luckily for him, when it comes to Dallas and the defense, they don't have that one guy who is a prime defender. They play team defense. So Clay can take advantage of that. Now, what will this do for Dallas? Will they make them a favorite out of the rest? No. Nope. But you have to look at Dallas and say, they're in, do I want to look at them and say they're an elite team or a title contender? They're one of the two. It's hard to tell, man. It's hard to tell. Because, like, I know they went to the finals last, this past season, but they only won one game. Now, I'm not saying that they don't belong because, like, if you can get one, yeah, you belong to go to the NBA Finals. If you get swept in the NBA Finals, then I'm going to look at you and say, no, nah, you shouldn't have been there. Like, whoever you be in the West Coast Finals, they should have went. <laughs> but Dallas did not get swept in the NBA Finals, so they belong. But at the same time, I'm looking at how that squad is. And, and first of all, it's a sign and trade, meaning Dallas had to trade a bunch of guys to get Clay. I don't know who all they traded, but they had to trade a bunch of guys to get Clay. So if any of those guys was like, Crucial to them making it to the NBA Finals, then I can't look at Denver and say, yeah, they're going to run it back. So let's actually, we got the news right here. So Dallas gets Clay from Golden State. And the Hornets, who is the third team, would get Josh Green from Dallas. And then the Warriors getting picks. Two picks, two second round picks, to be exact. And I'm like, wow, okay, Josh Green is a good player. So, even though they only gave up one player, but we're going to see if that was crucial in terms of them winning the championship, getting back to the finals, and things of that nature. So, it's going to be interesting to see what will happen with that. And then, we got to talk about the New York Knicks. We got to talk about the New York Knicks. So... What in the world did the New York Knicks do? Well, the New York Knicks, they brought in somebody, and then they lost somebody. So when the news broke that the Knicks were going to um, get this one player, like Vanderbilt guys, they have four Vanderbilt players on the squad. And everybody was like, this team is legit the second best team in the East. And at that time, I'm like, no, nah, they're the best team in the East. Because here's what I said. I said this. In, I think I did a, a, you know, a playoff prediction video. I was like, yo, New York is going to the NBA Finals. That was at the start of the playoffs. But then they suffered 
two more injuries outside of Julius Randle being injured at the start of the postseason. But I was still was like, yo, the New York Knicks are going to the NBA Finals. I didn't say they were going to win it, but I did say that, yeah, they were going. And I try to remember, who did they pick up? I'm not seeing it on the NBA free agency thing, but they picked up somebody. I forgot who, is, who this dude's name is, but they picked up somebody, which is funny. And it's weird, because I don't even see the name on the NBA.com free agency list, which is weird. Very, very weird. But they picked up somebody, and everybody was like, oh, guys, they got four Vanderbilt players who were together when they won that national championship. Yeah. I was like, yo, they're going to the NBA Finals this time around. And then some news broke regarding the New York Knicks as they lost Hartinson. He decided to go to OKC for a three-year, $87 million deal, which is crazy. So, oh, uh, and then you got the fact that Paul George is now going to the 76ers. And now it's like, yeah, um, that, 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 that top spot in the East is up for grabs now. It's. It is kind of is now. <laughs> As I got the hiccups. Um. So it's gonna be, and that's it. Yeah, I found it. They they traded for M Mikael Bridges. That's what they got. They, they traded for Mikael Bridges, and that's what before the NBA draft happened. So now I remember. And at that point, we was like, "Oh snap! The Knicks are gonna be doing the things. They're amongst the top two teams of the East." But ever since they locked Hardinson. And again, the 76 to pick up Paul George. No, it's like, well, mm, I don't know that again. That talks about up for grabs. So basically, with the way things are right now, here's how I see things. In the rest, you gotta look at OKC. But really, it's two teams. It's OKC and it's Minnesota. You gotta look at those two. And also, the, the Timberwolves, they brought it back. Or, yeah, they brought in Joe Ingles. So, that's also interesting as well. Minnesota, with um, their star player, you have to look at them and say, yo, they learned a lot this past offseason. They're going to make some news. This Or, they look not offseason, this past postseason. They're going to make some news. They're going to make some moves. They're going to make some noise this upcoming postseason. You got to look at Minnesota and say, yo, they're going to the finals. You can say that. You can say that. But then again, you look at OKC, who had a number one seed last year, young team, but they're learning as well. And now you got to look at them and say, well, they might make it this time around. Because they bring, they brought in some fresh talent to be added to that squad that had the number one seed going into the playoffs. Yeah. You're going to have to look at them and say, this, this could be the one for OKC. This could be the one for OKC. So I'm looking at those two as the top two teams in the rest. After them, ooh, it's going to be tough. In terms of, I, first of all, I got the Lakers number five. I got the Lakers number five. I got Denver number four. Some people would say Dallas number three. And you know what? I'll give you that. I'll give you Dallas number three. Um, we'll see how the, you know, Clay fits and the, whether or not they're going to miss Josh Green or not. But I'll give Dallas number three, Denver number four, and the Lakers number five. And... I don't like where the Clippers are heading. I don't like where the Suns are heading. So, and then you got you can't rule out the Pelicans. And you can look at that and say, yo, that's your top eight right there. Now, y'all may be wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about Golden State? Oh, speaking of Golden State, they also um, lost CP3, or they got rid of CP3. He's more than likely going to the Spurs. They're going to pair him up with Wemby? Oh, that Spurs squad going to be interesting. With the knowledge of Chris Paul playing with that, what? No, he's, he's, he's more than a seven-footer. He's taller than a seven-footer. That's going to be an interesting duo right there in San Antonio. So I'm not saying they're going to be winning a championship or they're going to even make the playoffs, but they have improved. They have improved. So, yeah, but I got my top five right there in the rest. The East is going to be difficult to pinpoint, but if I have to make a guess, I must say, and then the Knicks, well, the Knicks, ooh, it's tough. But it really depends on who can stay healthy because the top three squads, Boston, New York, and Philly, which ironically, 
Now that I think about it, they're all in the same division, right? Yeah, they're all in the same. Yeah, they're all in the same division, which is crazy. But those three are the top three teams in the East. But they all have injury-prone players, like key players. Boston have Porzingis. New York have Julius Randle. And 76ers have Embiid and Paul George. So the, the question is, who can stay the healthiest? Whoever can stay the healthiest out of the three, you can look at and say, yeah, that's the number one team in the East. But that's the heavy favorites in the East. So on that note, I must say that the New York Knicks would be the number one team in the East. I got Boston number two, and I got the 76ers number three. And then after that, I got Orlando number four, and uh, crappy Cleveland number five. And you probably wonder, wait, where's Milwaukee? Milwaukee did nothing so far. Like, outside of them picking up veteran forward Torian Prince, I don't know who that is. Do you know who that is? So, I mean, I don't, I don't think he's going to be a deal breaker to the point where, oh, my God, they're a title contender again. So, I, I don't like the Bucks. They're going the opposite direction, in my opinion. So, again, I got New York number one, Boston number two, Philly number three, Orlando number four, and... I got Cleveland number five. Um, I can put Milwaukee number six ahead of Indy. Yes, ahead of Indy. And then Miami would be number eight. And that's how things stands right now. Again, we still got more free agency. You know, we got the trade. Because the trade deadline isn't until February. So a lot can happen between now and the playoffs. 2025 playoffs. So that's my thoughts on that. I'm going to call it a wrap because I got a flight to catch. So with all that said. Y'all know who this is. This is boy New Jake Aspie, aka New Stephen A. Smith, saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah.